this is a video about the difference uh, of the Polar Wall ICF system to virtually every other ICF system on the market and about how it came to be designed. Uh, the first thing that people notice about the Polar Wall formwork system is the difference to the to what everybody else manufactures, which are moulded polystyrene blocks. Whereas Polar Wall, as you can see here, is a rather unique plank system. Uh, in getting to why the Polar Wall system is so different, we first need to consider perhaps why the other ICF systems are basically the same. And since the first blocks were registered nearly 40 years ago, there's been a huge number of sort of Me Too type copies launching their own sort of versions. And uh, these were these were basically polystyrene moulding companies who saw a new market opening up for their mouldings. And they were only obviously only looking at moulded block solutions. Um, so they're all very much the, the, the same and often they were redesigning the, the same faults into new versions. Now, uh, the very first question that um, the guy who invented this guy called Al Maindrin, who's a construction engineer in the American Midwest, uh, the very first question he asked himself was why use expanded polystyrene? Well, it's the only insulation that can be moulded, so uh, block ICFs have to be made of expanded polystyrene. But the main problem is in its strength. The, the, the strength of the material depends upon the fusion of the beads that you can see here. And it's primarily used for things like uh, coffee cups and fish boxes and packaging, building insulation boards, of course ICF blocks. But there's another material which is extruded polystyrene, which is much stronger than EPS and consequently it's used in more heavyweight applications uh, such as sheet fabrication, coal stores, refrigerated vehicles and and also under things like roads, railways and under even airport runways in places such as Alaska or Siberia. So a material was the first thing that was considered and uh, in general terms XPS has four big advantages. It's got a greater mechanical strength to resist the concrete pressure and it's a better insulin. It's also a much more moisture resistant which is very important especially when below ground and we find that there's a greater consistency of quality in the material. Now the advantage that the EPS has over the XPS is that the EPS is the only insulation which can be moulded and uh, it's, it's also much cheaper than the other insulation. Now at Polar Wall we only use the XPS and sometimes we're asked whether we can supply the cheaper EPS and of course the answer is yes we can do that uh, but we won't actually do it. Uh, the, 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 issue, the issue for us isn't the cost, it's more to do with uh, quality material. Now the very first block ICS were made out of one molded one piece of molded polystyrene using a polystyrene cross tie as you can see here and it's a neat solution it's simple it's cost effective however uh, a couple of problems occur with this and it's the wide bridge of the tie uh, because it's so wide uh, across here the concrete gets underneath and causes the, the the blocks to lift and separate and it also creates a complicated shape for the concrete uh, either something approaching a sort of a, a waffle shape or a post and beam and that can make it difficult to get the proper compaction of the concrete and the consolidation especially if there's any reinforcement in there uh, difficult to place the reinforcement as well and on the left that's the ideal structural concrete wall flat and plain and in the center and on the right we've got the two shapes that are likely to be left by something with wide bridge polystyrene ties and the, the next developing development in icf block system so uh, incorporation of a rigid plastic tie as we can see here now this is embedded in the molded polystyrene down the side and this was a significant improvement as it allowed for a flat concrete wall and it had a much greater improved strength uh, however to embed properly in the for in in the form you need this flat plate going down quite some length and therefore the ties need to have some depth as well and the depth of the tie creates similar problems to the foam bridge tie in that the large area can cause it to be lift lifted and, and separated in the same way and also the, the, there are other problems linked to anything that goes through the concrete which is to do with moisture pathways really needs to have some sort of uh, transverse type uh, puddle flange type of, of arrangement on there which doesn't which we don't normally see and uh, sometimes voids can be created as well on the negative side of the, of the block uh, which isn't really an, a, a big deal above ground but can be very undesirable shall we say in a basement construction where we actually need to make sure that, that concrete is perfectly placed within the um, within the wall. So uh, to, to try to keep the wall straight sometimes some of the block designers included these uh, little 
slots you can see here for fixing the rebar into and uh, the, the idea being that the rebar will help keep the wall straight which is fine except that the, the, the rebar actually gets bent on site and um, it, it can actually c cause the wall to, to, be, to be more bent rather than more straight so it, it's disadvantageous. Now some companies have gone for a cross type of steel uh, which is good in that the high tensile strength of the steel allows for a minimum profile uh, through the concrete. But the bad news is seeing when we compare the thermal conductivity performance uh, of some ICF materials and here we see the, uh, the insulations and this is the lambda value where the, the, higher the, the higher the number the more it will transmit heat energy. So uh, that, that's typically for a, a plastic uh, such as our plastic tie, which is less than the, the, the concrete would transmit. And here we can see the steel. And if we want to compare that in terms of re relative to, um, to, to to the insulations and the plastics, uh, th that's about 40 times more than concrete. So it transmits heat about 40 times faster than concrete and 200 times more than plastic and about 1,000 times more than the, uh, the, than, the, than the insulation itself does. So, and also, what happens? The, the big plate that's used down the side here, this is embedded into the uh, in, in, into the polystyrene molding, acts a bit like a heat exchanger. A typical block will lose about thirty percent. Uh, uh, There's about thirty percent less effective from a thermal viewpoint, but it, it's good for it's good for strength um, in, in how it works. Now, what we were looking for was this low profile, same as the steel, but we, we, we're not in steel, so we had to go for plastic. And the plastic that we went for was had to be something with very high tensile strength, so we went for the quite expensive polycarbonate material. And a cheaper plastic could have been used, but what was sought here was minimum profile was what was important. And the ties come in a range of sizes, and um, they, they were designed with these water bars there to 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 resist any water flow that might occur across the tie and they're in sizes from 100 to 300 millimeters and there are nodules on there which you can't see on that model but you can see here and the, the these nodules are there to uh, to, to locate the reinforcement bar as, as it's being um, as it's being uh, put put into the wall rather than to to fix it rigidly now as the fluid concrete goes in the resistance to the separation is provided by the male female repeat on a molded block and every system uses a different shape and some hold better than others but uh, if the cross ties are elaborate and the concrete is relatively fluid then separation of the blocks can occur and the only remedy to that is to glue each of the blocks together uh, which is it usually holds fine but it takes time and doesn't lend itself to any mistakes and when pouring between floors care needs to be taken as well to make sure that the concrete doesn't get in between those male protrusions otherwise you're going to be forever cleaning them out now uh, what you've also got here is a potential for modularity um, and what this can mean is that the architect or the designer can spend a lot of expensive time in altering the design to fit the module rather than the uh, the, the block being cut to fit the design so uh, the, the, these are the problems that we can see with uh, with, with the molded male female connection on the block systems so our, our solution was to come up with this sort of ladder and the, the ladder is um, made of the, the the cross ties and this H rail and the, the rail as you can see is where the board sits into and it has these um, I should put it um, it's a barb a continuous sort of molded barb uh, along its length and the barb stops the stops the uplift of the of the, um, of, of the boards uh, grabs hold of the, the polystyrene and stops it from being uplifted and the the two the, the two rails together being held by those ties means that they, they, they stay very straight and uh, what what it means there's a big advantage is that it acts sort of like a whaler and here we can see a whale, a whaler system here in sort of a traditional form where and these lines represent the, the, the horizontal whaler which gives in all sorts of form work the lateral stability to the wall. Here's a very nicely done traditional shuttering system. And here we see some modern proprietary systems uh, using the, the, the horizontal whaler and the vertical soldiers. Now, uh, some people say you don't need it on a block ICF, but here you can see that sometimes the, uh, the ICF contractor decides that whalers are needed. And they've actually pierced this together with uh, Dividag bars, you can see in there as well. Uh, there are the whalers going across there. Here's another view and here's another ICF system where the contractor again decided to use uh, timber to, uh, in the form of horizontal whalers 
across the whole thing to give it stability. Now here's the polar wall system and with the typically straight walls that I think we're known for. Uh, and this is all due to the wheel effect of the rails which allows us to get this straightness and stability to the walls. Here's the ladder. This is uh, how the ladder is put together. This little sort of uh, contraption in the background is a, what we call the snapper. And it takes about 20 seconds to snap one together. The rails also give us the ability to use whichever thickness of board we choose simply by having the board fabricated uh, with a groove, as you can see here. And this means we can get down to very low U values, including sort of passive house sort of levels. And uh, this is with a 6 inch 150 mil board on the outside and a 2 inch or 50 mil board on the inside of that particular wall. Here we've replaced the uh, um, the, 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 uh, the whole polystyrene board with the timber wall plate to do a timber floor. Neat solution all cast into the concrete. And this is another thing with the, the rails and we're looking now at the adaptability and the buildability of the system. Again, here you can see a swimming pool and so we don't have to build off anything too flat. We don't have to worry about how flat the, f the floor is. We could build off a 45 degree slope or more. Same when it comes to uh, to stepped foundations. We're not we're not limited to any fixed height. And by placing the rails vertically, we can cut the inner board to create any particular radius on site and uh, get very accurate. We can even do a changing radius like a sinuous curve effect you see here, or very tight to do this hot tub in this pool. And of course, one great advantage is that we can use welded wire mesh. And this saves a lot of time and money over using in loose rebar any shape or angle can be made and here we can see some concrete in the uh, in the in the rails nobody rushing to get it out because it'll just be knocked out afterwards here's a typical block system as you can see there's quite a, a large number of components and uh, the polar wall system only has five five basic components and from that we we say that we can do virtually everything with it now these are icf systems and this is just showing the amount of extra wood that can be needed to build straight and you know to, to resist the concrete pressures and this is some of the block systems and you can see bastard joints there and, and things to resist concrete pressure or where there's problems um, here we can see a particular one where they've got it strapped heavily strapped with uh, OSB board um, quite quite significantly uh, to keep the corners straight and to stop it from sort of uh, bursting again on the corners and again another corner problem here and some uh, wheeler effect as you can see at the top and the bottom of each concrete wall uh, here again a lot of horizontal strapping to hold it together uh, sometimes in corners um, and the, the point of this is that you know the, the, is that a block system needs a little bit more uh, thought and care uh, before that concrete goes in and this all adds to the, the time and the, the extra time and, and, the, and the cost that's involved uh, both before the pour and after the pour. So uh, th that's how the polar wall system came to be different from everything that had gone before. And if you want to come and see how other people use our products, come and look at our website, www.polarwall.co.uk. Thank you for watching.